This is wildlife biologist Eric Orff with my New Hampshire Fish and Wildlife YouTube channel. Well, I have done something this morning that I hadn't done for a while. I delved back into my diaries. You know, I kept a daily diary just about every day of my 31 year career as a wildlife biologist, or first a fisheries biologist, and then a wildlife biologist for the New Hampshire Fish and Game Department. So I have recorded daily happenings for a long time, and I still am, as a matter of fact. But uh, so typically, what I've done in the past is, uh, you know, here it is, late July. So I'll look into my a diary from the past, uh, and look into July, late July or mid July, to see what happened. So for this one here from 1981, again, I started as the wildlife biologist. The uh, actually back then it was called a game biologist. In fact. Right here, it says Eric P. Orff, Game Biologist. So back then we were all Game Biologists in the Game Division. That changed over time. It's 34 Bridge Street, before the fire. So looking at this one, uh, I can see that uh, I did a, quite a bit of bear, had quite a bit of bear, bear activity. And I started in October of 78 as the first bear biologist in New Hampshire. And it was just myself and Henry Larrabee, my supervisor, who hired me, that were trained to use tranquilizing equipment. And uh, But I began to do some research into black bears as well. But uh, in fact, that winter, in February of 81, if I were to look it up, we actually went up to Lisbon, New Hampshire, and put a radio collar on a female black bear in the den. That was the first time that we actually put a radio collar on a black bear in New Hampshire, so that was in February of 1981. But I can see here that on July 11th, I went up to track that bear. She had three cubs, and we actually later on put a radio collar on each of the cubs. So we were tracking, I was tracking the family of bear that summer <coughs> uh, for a period of several months. Now I also see here on July 15th, it says it was a beautiful day, uh, not too hot, warm but not too hot. So I actually processed a bear that was captured, a nuisance bear, a trouble bear, that was captured in Colebrook back, uh, and I'm sure it still happens, the conservation officers or COs would often set the bear traps for these nuisance bears and catch them, and either Henry or myself would process the bear and tag it and transport it to another location. So this particular bear was apparently brought to headquarters, so down to Concord, and uh, and then I took it to meet Pete Lyons, 220, and we released the bear on Green Mountain in Effingham. And then I went to a Tamworth trailer park and checked on another bear complaint, and uh, we found two sets of bear tracks and yada yada. So, anyways, a little bit about that. Oh, what else here? So, on the, on the 24th, I processed, uh, no, I went back to Lisbon in the 25th, two days I spent up there. It says on the 29th, I set a bear trap in North Woodstock. Uh, here's an interesting one. On, on July 31st, 1981, I was flying. <laughs> yes, I was. You know? Uh, I used to fly with the state police airplane. They had an airplane and somehow I connected with Jim Volner. He was uh, a Vietnam vo uh, veteran and kind of a jockey pilot. So this particular day on the 31st of July we flew to check another bear that actually I had worked with a graduate student by the name of Ken Elo at the University of, Ma of Ma Massachusetts and Wendell Dodge, his, uh, his uh, professor, and we had actually put a radio collar on a female bear and released it and started. So where there were no bears, I transferred that bear from uh, up north down to Stoddard. And so I went flying to check on that bear, <laughs> and I just see, I saw a note here. So that particular day, from 10 to 12, we flew down to Stoddard and checked on that bear. Then we got a call, uh, the, the state trooper did, in the plane uh, from his headquarters to come back to Concord because a fishing game truck had been stolen. 
this was another day that uh, Charlie Berry was the director and uh, uh, when, when he called the state police that morning to try to get the state police plane to go look for this missing fishing game truck which was stolen right out of the, uh, the garage at headquarters. Uh, Charlie said, well, the plane is busy today, they're out looking for bears. So anyways, so uh, back we came from Stoddard and we flew around Concord, we checked, I remember here it said we checked the, uh, we checked the, the, the areas, the cornfields in, in around Concord, we checked, we checked the, uh, uh, the quarry, and actually we came home and picked up Gary Nylon. He worked for Fishing Game at the time. We flew west out of Concord to over the quarries and checked the cornfields and tried to find where the bear, where the truck, Fishing Game truck had been dumped. We never did spot it, but uh, <laughs> what adventures I had flying with the state police with Jim Volner and checking on our bears at the time. Not many radio callers, but uh, <laughs> he was good enough and kind enough to uh, have me on board that state police plane and we'd go looking for bears. So we had some some great times searching for bears and uh, a stolen fishing game truck. So you never know what a day is going to bring to you when you're a wildlife biologist or at that time a game biologist with the New Hampshire Fishing Game Department. Uh, up in the air you could be looking for a bear or a stolen fishing game pickup.